Hello everybody, welcome back to CJ Explores. I'm Charlotte and behind the camera is Corey. And in this video, we are exploring the beautiful Dartmoor National Park. So this walk is to Wismans Wood and we've actually been here before. We drove through here a while ago going from London back to Cornwall. We stopped off in this beautiful picturesque little location called the Two Bridges Hotel, uh, which is just back there and that's where you park at the car park across the road from the Two Bridges Hotel. So we decided to do the Wismans Wood walk today because it's been a little bit foggy. So we thought if we're going into a woods, we're not gonna be looking for beautiful views. We want a magical, mystical experience. Um, but the fog has lifted a little bit, so we have a bit of very clear sunshine. Bright. Yeah, it's quite nice. Honestly, it's just stunning here, so we're happy just to go for a walk. It seems like a popular trail. That little car park was full because of people on the path up here. Just enjoying it. Yeah. So let's go and see what Wisman Wood is all about. It's so nice to be out hiking in nature again. It's been a while since we've put on the hiking boots and done a little trip. But this place here just already feels so magical. Everything's covered in it's like rich green moss. Everything's kind of like damp and misty. There's animals everywhere. We've already run into a few ponies, <laughs> um, lots of sheep, and we've crossed loads of cattle grid as well coming in here um, to keep the animals in their fields. But yeah, it's just a very magical feeling place. We are about one mile. one mile in from our walk and we're here. This is Wisman Woods and it says do not go too far into the woods, I guess just reserve the area, but the people are on the edge so we're going to go down to the lower path and have a little look. Well, that has just been lovely. We've had a nice little picnic just in front of the moss. And now we're gonna just find a little section where it's quite narrow. We're gonna go down to the stream and then walk the stream all the way back. Uh, the sun is coming out and we've got some nice, beautiful blue skies now. Um, so we are gonna enjoy it. And maybe next we might go and hike a tour. So we're not gonna turn around and walk the same route that we came in because there's a path that runs down along the stream which we thought would be quite a nice alternative on our way back. We've seen some people cut down so we're trying to make our way down without harming too much of the moss. This seems like a path in a bit of more of a dead area. We made it! We've come down to the stream. It is so beautiful here. It's just so tranquil, peaceful. We feel like just so happy and naturally high just being out in nature again. It's such a lovely feeling but we're gonna follow this path now along this beautiful stream back to the car park. Yeah, from the creek side, down in the bottom of the valley, you've got a better perspective of all the green moss growing on the rocks and the trees. Um, it just looks so magical. If you were gonna shoot a Lord of the Rings film or anything with a bit of myth or magic in it, this would be a perfect spot, it's so nice. <laughs> the Dartle ponies are so cute. As you can see, they're quite small and they just look so cute. Um, obviously, they're used to people being around, so as long as you don't go too close to respect their space, sometimes they come up to you. Most of the time, they're just looking for food. Hello. But you see many more Dartle ponies in these areas. Unfortunately, they have dwindled in numbers, but there's still plenty of them about that you'll definitely see one on your trip. That was absolutely magical. Can't recommend coming up here enough for a sunset. If you're coming in summertime, pack a picnic, go sit over there on the wall and just watch the sunset. Spectacular. I 
we keep just having to stop and pull over because there's so much to see here. There's so many little beautiful spots. We've just crossed a bridge and there's like an old granite slab bridge um, next to it. So we're gonna go check it out. Cute bridges. The one nearest to us looks a little bit sketchier than everyone, but I'm gonna go over it. We have come to the Warren House Inn for some food and our friend recommended this place because they said it's in a lovely setting and it is gorgeous. Outside, my window view is just the moors and we were thinking about eating outside but it's gone a little bit chilly so come inside, it's very warm in here, there's a fire burning and we're having some food before we go and tackle a tour. That was a nice little spot for a little bite to eat to fuel us but as we were eating the fog has rolled in so it might change our plans but Let's take a drive so we can find. It's our last day in Dartmoor. Before we go, Corey insisted we have to go hike a tour because we keep cancelling it because the weather's been pretty iffy. But um, it's five degrees and blown a hooli, but it doesn't look too far, so we're going to go up it. It's not a very long walk from the car park. We're just basically crossing the road and, I don't know, like 100, 200 metres up a hill. But coming up this road was so epic because as we come up and around the corner, you could just see all of these tours just around us and I'm, I'm guessing when we get to the top we're going to get the view of all of these like granite outcrops just scattered on top of the hills in the distance. That wind is very cold. That didn't take too long and I'm happy to be here because the wind has dropped because this massive tour is sheltering us. Spectacular views from up here and really you know an easy walk just straight up the hill. It took about, what, five minutes? Look at the size of that thing. It looks really weird as well. It looks like it's folded, like a, I don't know, like it's nearly like a brainy kind of structure. It looks really weird, but this is Haytor Rocks. Um, and there is a challenge you can do where you hike 10 in 24 hours. Um, obviously we didn't have time to do that. And you have to be quite lucky with the weather as well because it's one of those places where it's just constantly changing, it's quite a windy landscape so you do get a lot of changes in weather throughout the day. We've had days where we've had beautiful sunshine, blue skies, hail, rain, <laughs> wind, basically everything so yeah be prepared for every sort of weather but do do enjoy it, do come and make the most of it because just look at this, how incredible. The landscape right below us looks like a Lord of the Rings setting. Really cool. <laughs> I'm scared. Ah! I sit! I sit! Ta-da! It is a good view from up here though, wow. 360. We're on top of Haytor and it's so incredible. We can see one, two, three, four, five, six. There's just tours everywhere. So anywhere where there's like a hill with a rocky outcrop on top, that's a tour. Um, and there's hundreds here. It's so wonderful. And if you lived here, like we just keep seeing all these people, like they seem like local people just taking their dogs for walks in this huge, huge, beautiful landscape. And actually, if you look down, you can just see all of these kind of, I'm, I'm not actually sure if they're natural paths made by the animals, the sheep and the horses and everything, but all across the moor, when you look down from above, it's just pathways interweaving. You can walk all over this landscape. We're gonna take a little walk around the brain now. <laughs> That's what I'm calling it, it's called the brain. Um, there's some people actually climbing it. You can go up it and I put the drone up and I could see there's actually steps um, carved into the rock leading up to the top. So looks like something that you could probably do if you were keen as a bean. Um, unfortunately, not all of us are. <laughs> I can see why Corey's calling it a brain. It does look, look like a bit like a brain. So we'll call it brain tour forevermore. It's making me very interested to wonder how all these tours were formed and because there's so many in Cornwall too that we've been exploring it does make you think 
Um, so I'm guessing this is just another section of huge granite uh, rock that sort of lies under the surface but then does peek through on these hilltops where there's lots of erosion. We were driving and we saw this sign and had a quick Google and it said it's a Bronze Age settlement. We can kind of see at the top of the hill uh, a big rock formation. So we're going to go follow the path. As we get up the hill we can see there's actually two points of interest um, and Google Maps has helped us out there. Up to our left on top of the hill is Hookney Tor and then on our right is Grimspound. You can see like all the stones created like this huge circle. I guess this is a settlement area. I mean there's no information signs but maybe we can have a little research online after. Yeah. We found the entrance. We can see structures that we believe were like small little housing areas maybe from the settlement we can see like the outline of kind of square rectangular uh, buildings and this quite large kind of circular shape area and maybe this is just where they had all of the kind of the settlement the living areas was all inside the walls but it's fascinating this is interesting isn't it it's amazing how it's still here after so many years. So we've just been listening to the English Heritage Audio Guide, which you can find on their website, a very handy resource if you want to learn more about this place. But one thing that they mentioned is that some of this stuff, they're suspicious that it was reconstructed in the 19th century. I think the original layout was there, but they were stacking stones on top to make it look more obvious, like the grand entrance they don't believe that was quite as grand. Yeah, just a fascinating idea to think in the Bronze Age, over 3,000 years ago, there were people hanging out here in some sort of established, civilised culture, um, surviving up here on the moor. They must have been cold. They must have been very chilly cold. and I'm wrapped up before. But what they think is that they were roundhouses, built with stone um, and they just were super smoky as well so they would have a fire just going all the time <laughs> um, which had some pros and some cons. Pros obviously it's warm, um, a pro of the smoke is that it's good for sort of like preserving food so you can have um, perhaps meat hanging up so smoked meats would last for longer. And one of the cons I think would be <laughs> definitely the health if you lived inside one of those houses with a fire going all the time um, and nowhere for the smoke to exit it would just sort of sit there and you'd just be breathing in smoke so possibly a reason why people didn't live so long back in the day <laughs> Well, we really hope you guys enjoyed our Dartmoor National Park vlog adventures. Yeah, it's nice to explore somewhere new that we haven't been to before. Yes, and if you want to go and book the railway cottage, we'll leave a link in the description below so you can check that one out. The host there, Becky, she is a lovely lady. She will give you a care package based on your dietary requirements. And she is also a bit of a tour guide. So if you have any questions about walks you want to do in the area or you just want to be guided on tours, on tours, on tours, on a tour tour, she will be the one to either A, take you, or tell you loads about it, because she is a Dartmoor fanatic. So um, definitely pick her brains if you book it. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, if you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you in the next adventure. Bye.